Hello there, this is Prozwal, one half of the Legion of Sports with Proz and Avi. I wanted to welcome and thank you for joining us today. We're really glad you're here. This is designed for you. All the latest news, views, and reviews in the world of sports. Before we dive in, remember you can find our podcast on various streaming sites such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, amongst others. Also, do follow us on Instagram at the Legion of Sports. Today, we have a lot in store, spillovers from the Premier League midweek match day, look ahead to the resumption of the baseball season. We're also debuting our first ever guest appearance. That and plenty much more in our midweek bonanza. Before we get into the show, let's just set the scene with my co-host, the lackadaisical Bronco of Inasa. What's going on, man? I mean, why you gotta introduce me every time with a Bronco's comment on it? Mm-hmm. Because you're obsessed with it, aren't you? Today I'm upset just because I had to get a, a shave after eight months. But apart from that, uh, life is good, man. Yeah, you look way different. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do feel 10 pounds lighter and, and maybe a couple of years younger as well. I'm not sure, sure about that. So today we have our very first guest, very historic, our MLB insider, 17-year baseball veteran, the greatest player that has never played professional baseball. Alexander Piokinto Lopez. Yeah. All right. What's going on, Praj? What's going on, Avi? How you guys doing? Good, man. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. I'm doing good as well, Alex. Uh, nice to see you after so long. How's uh, baseball going? Uh, baseball is going all right for the world. And, you know, it's about to, about to get uh, kicked off for us. And so I'm super excited. Uh, I haven't played in a long time, but I love watching. So I'm really, really pumped for, uh, for the season to be getting back on uh, this week for us. So on a personal level, uh, he's also a music choir director in Duncanville. How long have you been doing that for now? Uh, so this is the start of my third year. Um, I mean, it's kind of a weird year, obviously, with all the COVID stuff. But, uh, but I started uh, basically a year after I graduated from Wesleyan. And uh, this will be start of year three for me. So I'm pretty excited. So how has that transition been from uh, playing baseball for 17 years and to not really play and just focus on your career? Uh, that's music. Um, it wasn't too bad for me. Some guys, uh, especially at the college level, they may not have um, a really good gauge of what they want to do after college. I was already pretty sure what I wanted to do. I wanted to do something with music. Uh, I got my teaching degree. And, uh, and so I was, uh, it was pretty smooth for me to go into that after there. And Alex, I mean, how excited are you if I give you an opportunity to be a DJ in my birthday next month? Birthday, birthday DJ, I do. I'll get you. I'll get people out on the dance floor. We'll be dancing. Be, be, be going to town. I got you. I got you. All right. <laughs> All right, that's it. I got my deal done. Thank you. Right on. No problem. So, what does Alex get back in favor? See, I mean, he gets a chance to be a DJ in a first ever birthday party. <laughs> Avinas's 35th birthday, I guess. Oh. Ooh, ooh, ow. 26, but that's all right. <laughs> so we'll just set the scene. Like I said, um, so MLB will be back this coming Thursday. To our listeners who don't really know what baseball is or what MLB is in general and what, what, like what the return is this Thursday. So just could you give us a, a, a summary of it? Um, so a quick summary, usually the MLB season starts late April into uh, May, and we have spring training in February, and they were actually about halfway through spring training when all the COVID stuff hit, and the NBA was the first one to shut down, if we remember, uh, and then everybody else kind of just followed suit, and uh, there were fans and everything in Arizona and Florida, are the two locations that they usually have spring training at, and uh, those two were the two places that got shut down, and uh, they've just been kind of waiting it out since. Wasn't baseball the first league to actually create the bubble system, but they got mocked for it. And now baseball is started doing, I mean, the basketball started doing the bubble and looks like they might actually get it off the ground. But baseball, baseball was made fun of. 
it was it was interesting because one of the first ideas was to have it in a couple different locations like spring training or maybe at walt disney world walt disney world has a giant obviously we know for basketball that was a world of sports but they have baseball fields over there as well so they were thinking about putting it in a couple different places across the country and just playing it out like spring training you know you have six or eight teams at each location everybody's in a confined space nobody has to go out for anything um but I don't know that they made fun of it or they just wanted to do something different or whatever it happened, but that just didn't end up being what's going on. And so uh, they're doing pretty much like they would normally. They're traveling, uh, except they're split into three regions uh, instead of playing teams like no Los Angeles teams are going to be playing New York teams. Uh, no Texas teams are going to be playing Florida teams. They're going to be staying in specific regions, basically cutting in the country to thirds in the eastern region, central region and western region. Yeah, to our listeners, uh, the season will be cut down to 60 games. Uh, they will play 40 games against their own division, and then rest will be uh, on against I mean teams from the other division. So we're going to be 60 games. Talking about making fun of uh, Rob Manfred, the commissioner was, you know, criticizing public because of the standoff between the player association and MLB. What's this thing about uh, MLB always? Because it stands out compared to NFL and NBA because. There is not a cohesion between uh, the players and uh, players and, and MLB, basically. And that surprises me because MLB players get paid way more in, in compared to uh, other players like major leagues, NBA, NFL, and on, on average, too. Uh, and I think that's a big bargaining chip that they have, right? Um, so compared to contracts, contracts are really what we're talking about. Uh, MLB players get more guaranteed money. A guy could sign for eight to 10 years and be guaranteed basically five years worth of his contract. NFL players, as we know, you know, Derrick Henry just got a long extension. Patrick Mahomes got long extensions. But those are the outliers when it comes to contracts in, in most of the other uh, professional leagues here in the U.S. Most guys are going to get one to two years guaranteed uh, and maybe a third year if it's a three to five year contract. And a lot of running backs in the NFL, you know, they get one or two year contracts and they don't get uh, near the amount of guaranteed money, which, you know, if they get hurt, uh, if they get traded, if something happens, they don't perform as well as they should. Um, that money goes away pretty quickly. But for baseball, um, it's pretty it's pretty easy. You sign your contract, you get your guaranteed money and uh, you go on from there. Did you see that contract, Bobby Bonilla or some? Mets player who's still getting paid he's already retired and there's a whole list of baseball players still getting paid I mean good for them they're still getting paid after retirement but for the for some of some of these teams uh it's a hassle isn't it the Mets are going to get paid he they're going to pay him I think until 2030 or something crazy like that and he hasn't played since the 90s or something like that how about the Mike Trout contract Mike Mike Trout if you baseball play, players uh, don't know, baseball watchers, um, he, he's the best player in the game right now. So he's worth every bit of the money that they're going to give him. Um, he has proven it over and over. He's finished in the top three for the MVP uh, every year except his first year, I think. And he won the rookie of the year that year. So, you know, he's still getting awards and accolades. Um, but that is, he's the best player in the game right now. I was him play a couple of years ago when Angels were in town, um, when they played the Rangers. But we, we all know he's the best player uh, in MLB right now. However, in other sports, when, when, you, when someone is touted as the, the best player, they stand out from the rest. However, I mean, it's just a sample size of one game, but he didn't really stand out. You know what I mean? Wait, wait, do, you, do, do you mean in that game or the league? Uh, in, in, in that game, and um, I, I've watched a couple of his games. It's a small sample size, but in other other. Uh, ML, I mean, NFL and other, you know, Premier Leagues, all these top, top athletes, you know, even in a couple of games, they stand out from the rest. But uh, don't get me wrong, he was, he was getting uh, good hits, but he didn't really stand out from the rest. Yeah, so his charisma is not the same as other guys. Um, I would definitely say there's younger guys that are more fun to watch. There are guys that are way worse than him that are fun to watch. Um, but over the whole season, uh, the numbers that he's put up are just ridiculous. They're dumb numbers. He hits a bunch of home runs. He has a ton of RBIs. He steals a lot of bags. He's faster. He throws farther and he covers more ground when he's on defense than, uh, any other guy that he's got. So for someone that doesn't know the game as well, and even those that do, he may not be as flashy, um, but he still, he still puts it out. He still gets the job done for sure. So. 
I feel like he's never made the playoffs, has he? He has not. I think yeah, I think they made the playoffs maybe a wild card game or maybe a series and they didn't win the series. So he he's either going to be in his first playoff game um or he'll be in his second or third if they make the season uh, postseason this year. So will he have a better chance of getting into the playoffs uh, this time around since it's a shortened season? I mean even the Marlins got a better chance of going to the playoffs this season than the Angels so <laughs> we'll see. They picked up a couple guys. They picked up the best third baseman uh, in the game right now, uh, and they have the the Japanese player uh, Shohei Otani. Uh, if he's healthy and Mike Trout's healthy and uh, Rendon is healthy, they'll have probably one of the best three hitters in all of the league. Uh, Shohei Otani pitches as well, and he's really good. So uh, the Angels could, you know, I don't, I don't like to put them ahead of our Rangers. You know what it, you know what it is. Um, but the Angels could have a pretty good chance. And I would, I would personally love to see Mike Trout in the playoffs because um, when it comes to ability, he's a LeBron. Uh, he's a Steph Curry when he's hot. Uh, he, he's, a, he's a Ronaldo. He's that kind of guy. He makes that kind of impact on the field. So since, you know, uh, we are a bunch of people from Nepal who don't really follow baseball much, and the reason uh, I wanted to ask you this question is because, you know, every time there's a close game in basketball or let's say football and when there's a you know close situation the last minute calls the best player gets gets the ball i mean that's how it works in every other sports so why in baseball why can't you have your best player going into the bat in the ninth inning that's a great question so that's one of the things that makes baseball unique like every dude has got to step up at one point in the season if your team's going to make the playoffs if they're going to win the pennant if they're going to win the world series, you know, like every guy has got to come up and do something like that uh, in order to do that. Sometimes if you have a really good bullpen guy, which you have starters and then bullpen guys that come in after starters that are pitchers. Um, if you have a really, really lights out guy in the back end of your bullpen, that can be your LeBron. That can be your Luca that you give the ball to at the end of the game. And you say, you're going to shut it down. You're going to win the game for us. So since this is a 60 game format, do you think, the league should, you know, experiment a, a wild card in bad situation for ninth inning. So, you know, if there's a close game, Yankee could, the Yankee coach could just pull out a card and say, all right, I'm going to put Juz in or, you know, Angels can go, all right, let's get Mike, uh, Mike Trout in. And you can only do that once in the whole game. That would be wild. Like I have never even thought about that, you know, just because being here and like we play the game a certain way the whole time, that's not even a thought that's ever crossed my mind. Um, I'm not saying that's impossible. Um, it would just be difficult to do logistically if the Yankees, you know, were to call on somebody, even on their own bench, like they always have backup players, obviously, but even on the other team or something like that, like somebody flying in from LA to go to New York or something like that, that would be, that'd be kind of crazy. I wouldn't be opposed to it. It would be interesting to watch. That's for sure. Interesting. Uh, it would definitely make me watch the whole game. Mm hmm so you meant you mentioned uh, logistics uh, behind uh, the the return. So, what are the health and safety protocols? Um, so for the MLB, it's uh, quite a bit different than like what the NBA is doing, right? The NBA is pretty enclosed; they're doing their own thing. Uh, the MLB will be getting tested uh, consistently. Uh, I don't know if it's every other day or you know two or three times a week, um, but that's what they're going to be doing. They will be traveling, so things will be a little bit different that way. Um, and again, like you mentioned earlier, they're going to be playing their division opponents. So like the Rangers will go to uh, Oakland, they'll play LA and they'll play the Angels uh, and they will play the Mariners. Uh, and then they'll also play the Houston Astros. Those are the other teams that are in their division. So they'll travel to them uh, off and on. And then they'll also play teams that are on the West Coast because we're in the Western region. Um, so I don't know exactly how it's going to be, you know, at the hotels when they're playing away. Uh, even when they're at home, are they going to be staying at Globe Life Park, which is our new home field? Are they going to be staying in suites there? Are the opponents going to be staying in suites there? Are they going to be staying in hotels? Um, they haven't really solidified that stuff. And I think they're going to be more relaxed on these regulations. Um, and maybe that'll be good for them. And maybe it won't. And I guess we'll just kind of have to see how that plays out. So I saw a segment where uh, MLB posted saying there'll be no spitting or chewing of tobacco or sunflower seeds. Um, Get See, I, I, I've, I've always been intrigued, interested and intrigued by this fact. Like, why do these players like chew tobacco so much? You know, Copenhagen, Winter Games, and all this stuff. Just 
That is a great question. Uh, I never did, but I had guys that were in high school. They were 15, 16, 17 years old doing chewing tobacco at summer ball tournaments. You know, it's just something that baseball players do. And a lot of other sports don't. Like I know there's other football players and basketball players that I know personally that have done it, but the dude, there's just so many in baseball that do. And I don't know why that's a thing that it is. Um, but it is some guys do it. And I mean, it gets them the little nicotine high. It gets them a little bit excited for the game and that's what they do. So what, what gets you high or uh, encouraged during the game? If, if you like, you're an outlier when it comes to chewing tobacco and seeds. Uh, for me, I, I was a pitcher. So like I controlled the whole game. If I didn't throw the ball, the game didn't start, you know, basically is how it went. When I was on the mound, uh, that was what got me pumped up and ready to go. If I was bad, then our team was going to lose. If I was good, then our team was going to win. You know, that's just how it went. The better guy that was pitching that day, uh, the majority of the time, the vast majority of the time, uh, that team is going to win. You know, if you, if you give up three or four runs, um, and your team isn't good at scoring runs, you're going to lose. You know, if you give up one to two, you give your team a chance. Um, and you do that, but, uh, but, uh, it just kind of depends. That was what, that's what it was for me. Clayton Korshaw would know better about it. And also, uh, Alex, since, you know, I've been playing cricket my whole life. So there's a little bit of similarity between baseball and cricket. And, you know, when I was fielding, you get the same vibe because, you know, you get bored a lot. You need to get something in your, you know, you, you get to chew something. Normally for me, it would, I would just uh, bite my nails and that was chewing gum for me. So what I wanted to ask you is how many packs of chewing gum do you go through in one game? It would depend. When I was in Kansas, I played summer ball. And I, so for me as a starting pitcher, I threw once a week, basically, maybe twice a week. Um, so the other five or six games that we played, I was literally sitting on the bench doing nothing. I was recovering. I was doing like rehab pitching and stuff like that in between outings um, and just doing recovery stuff. So I would sit there and watch the games and me and a buddy would sit there and we'd either chew an entire bag of seeds, sunflower seeds. Uh, or we'd go through a whole bag of big league chew and mix it up with something else, man. A whole bag for sure, at least in one game. <laughs> so Avinas tossed on about fielding. So why do these baseball guys catch with gloves on? If if you remember, uh, Alex, I've always been, you know, pounding on you about this thing. Like, just why, why don't you use your hand? You know, it's, it's it's not that hard. It just makes that game exciting, doesn't it? You're, you're absolutely right. It does make it more exciting <laughs> and it also breaks more fingers. There you go. It's obvious saying, showing right there with his hand. Um, I don't know. And, you know, maybe if we look at the difference in exit velocity, I don't know. These baseball players are hitting it off the bat at 117, 120 miles an hour. I don't know the exit velocity for cricket stuff. Maybe it's that much more. But you guys are using something that's harder than what we play with. So I couldn't tell you. Maybe it's just Americans being weak. <laughs> so actually, this, the similarity is uh... – the slip fielders in cricket, that velocity is pretty much similar to the fielders which are, who are inside the diamond, you know, the infield players. But the, the problem I have with the gloves is, how about the outside, I mean, the outfield players, like, I mean, how many are there, three? Three or four? Three, right? I feel if, if, if they are not allowed gloves, I mean, the game would be a whole lot interesting, more catches drop, more errors, more runs. But Man. again... Maybe, maybe it would go that way. You're going to have to get with mom, Rob Manfred. And yeah, he's not very Absolutely. good at communicating with people. So, you know, good luck on that one. <laughs> you start a petition on change.org. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. So we have much more about Alex. And we'll touch on his favorite team. But first, sports update by Avi. NFL training camps open next week as currently scheduled. Team's roster will include a maximum of 80 players as opposed to the usual 90 in an effort to help enforce social distancing measures in team facilities. Arsenal manager Mikel Arteta backs the Arsenal board after fans flew a banner over Villa Park saying, back Arteta, Kroenke out, before they lost 1-0 to Aston Villa. Also, City batted Watford 4-0. Zero creativity from Arsenal. Jack Grealish, stand out. And finally... Jeff Bezos made $13 billion to his net worth on Monday alone, the largest single-day jump for an individual, and that's enough money to buy Dallas Cowboys, New York Knicks, and the New England Patriots, and will still have a leftover about $500 million. You might as well add uh, Texas Rangers in there. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, for a bag of chips, maybe. 
So Texas Rangers is the team that Alexander uh, supports. Oh, I wasn't trying to make an enemy with uh, Alex, but you can't make enemy with people who don't any, know anything about the sport. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but 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 that <laughs> I mean that's my initial reaction every time I hear a sports team from Texas. So you know, that's just my initial hate. <laughs> that's fair. I can I can dig it. I can dig it. So before we get into the details about uh, the Rangers, you know, their the new stadium has been built. When I pass by it every time, it looks like uh, a different colored uh, Whataburger roof for some reason. Yeah, I don't know why. Like the the uh, the proofs that they sent out looked like it was going to be like really shiny glass and it was going to look super nice. It just looks like a big barn. It looks like a big tin barn and it looks kind of lame in Twitter pictures and I'm really sad. But the inside is gorgeous, so I'm not mad about it. The outside, it can do whatever it wants, but the inside is gorgeous, so I'm not too mad about it. I think I'm going to sit this one out since you guys are going to talk about Texas Rangers. <laughs> Texas Rangers are playing uh, Colorado Rockets, aren't they? Yeah, I think uh, Colorado won 5-1 today. Yeah, we're not going to talk about that. It didn't count, so it doesn't matter. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> it probably won't even count in the regular season too. I mean, let's, let's just jump to the playoffs. It'll, it'll actually be meaningful. So, Alex, how do you see uh, uh, Rangers' chance this season? I mean, they've been stinking for the last few years anyways. They haven't been stinking necessarily. They haven't been great. They haven't made the playoffs, and that's okay. Um, but we do have three guys that are really pretty good. If we have our first three pitchers um, going really, really well, uh, then we could have a pretty good season. Uh, Mike Miner, Corey Kluber, and Lance Lynn are our first three guys. Corey Kluber is a two-time Cy Young uh, award winner. That just means he's the best pitcher in his respective league. The MLB is split into the American and National League. Um, they have two Cy Young winners every year, one in each league. Uh, that was a couple of years ago. You know, Kluber's uh, kind of past his prime, but he can have a really good season. Mike Miner was great last year for us, and so was Lance Lynn. Uh, it just depends on what the the 60 game sprint is going to be like. We've never had a season like this, so it's really up in the air on what it's going to take to win these games. If it comes down to pitching, we got a really good chance um, to do that with these three guys if they have the same years that they've had the past couple. Uh, if it comes down to offense, it's just going to be on what kind of happens outside of Joey Gallo. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see. See, I feel like since it's a sprint, like you mentioned, 60 games, one of these smaller teams, uh, underdog teams, go on a momentum uh, boosting run for like 40 odd games and they'll definitely make the playoffs uh, to our listeners. The regular season ends on September 27th. So the, although the season is shortened, the playoffs will be in the same format. So the usual suspects might, might get over uh, the, get over the finishing line. Definitely. Um, I think it's very likely we could have some teams that probably wouldn't have made the playoffs in a full 162 games uh, make the playoffs this year. It's pretty, it's pretty likely we could have some underdogs, like you said, some Cinderella teams just make a run. Um, it's really possible that the Dodgers, the Astros, um, the Rockies. Um, maybe not the Rockies. Maybe not the Rockies. You Denver guy, I know. Um, the Astros, the Dodgers. Um, the Nationals, the Yankees. Oh, got it. No, the Astros, the Dodgers, and the Yankees are the three teams that are really well rounded. They've got exceptional guys in all of the in all of the facets: pitching, hitting, and defense. They've got some really good guys, and I don't doubt that those three will make the playoffs. Um, outside of that, it's kind of up in the air. There's some teams that should make the playoffs, um, and then there's some teams that could possibly sneak in. Um, they have some really fantastic young players. They have some really good pitching or some really good hitting. Maybe they don't have a really well-balanced team, uh, but they could sneak in there and, and take some games. The Blue Jays have two guys that are 22 and 23 that are phenomenal, and they could knock some teams out of the playoffs. That uh, And even if they don't make it, you know, there's just a whole bunch of stuff going on. So I'll put you on the spot. Who's going to win this year? And why Dodgers? Ooh, that's... Honestly, that's a great pick. Honestly, if you see, if I said that the Dodgers were going to win, like I would have pretty good confidence in it. I just genuinely can't say the Astros, even though they have a great team, um, just because of all the stuff that happened with them. I can't, I can't say it. Um, I can't say the Yankees either because I just don't like the Yankees. I've never liked them. You know, if you're from the South, you don't like those Yankees up north. Um, but really, the the those guys are 
really pretty good. I would, I would, I would agree with you, Avi. The, the Dodgers have a really good team. They've got starting pitching. They got bullpen guys, and they've got a fantastic lineup. I would not be surprised if they took it this year. And don't forget the signing of Mookie Mookie Betts from the Red Sox. Mookie Betts is that dude. He is. They signed the, the second or third best player in the whole league. So. Yep. So, Alex, put his beloved Astros into the mix for winning the title or winning the World Series. They 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 like to call it the World Series. You know, the the world doesn't even play. Come on, man. We'll talk about Astros and their controversial cheating scandal right next. Here's a ground ball right side. Could do it. The Houston Astros are world champions for the first time in franchise history. That championship trophy that's in Houston is bogus. They're not champions. But your behinds ain't no damn champions. You cheaters. 2019 was a spectacular year for MLB. Not always for the right reasons. Astros were caught cheating. And Alex, as a beloved Texas Ranger, I saw his social media post. He was on the Astros' back 24-7. So how did you feel hearing that scandal? So in baseball, um, you kind of take pride in picking up on signs. I wouldn't necessarily say stealing signs the, to the extent that the Astros took it. Uh, for us, we're always trying to pick up on little nuances, right? Uh, we pick up on when pitchers are going to throw certain pitches, uh, what hitters are good, depending on if they hit high pitches, low pitches, inside or outside. You know, we're always picking up on those things. And if coaches are blatantly showing signs and we pick up on it and we figure out what they're saying, that's one thing. Uh, what they were doing was basically seeing in real time, without any coaches, without any players realizing what was going on, they were picking up signs and knowing what pitch was coming next. And the guys that are at the MLB level, uh, if they know what pitch is coming next, there is not a team in the entire league that wouldn't do a heck of a lot better. There's not a single player that would do worse knowing what's coming. You know, they, these guys are really exceptional uh, at picking up on those types of things. And if they know what's coming, they're, they're going to crush the ball. And especially with the talent that the Astros have, that was my thing. They're already so good. They've got really phenomenal players, and they chose to do something to an extent that was just egregious, uh, and it wasn't necessary, and they got caught doing it. Yeah, uh, like you said, uh, if you know what's coming next, I mean, it's so much easier for batters to, you know, uh, hit the ball. Uh, I mean, since I play cricket, you know, if I knew what ball was coming to me, if it's, like, you know, if it's outside or inside, if it's a slider or a curveball, whatever, if I knew the ball, I mean, imagine if Mike Trott, had a signal like two seconds ahead of him. Hey, it's a fastball. Imagine how many home runs he would get. Oh, it was ridiculous. Absolutely. My problem with the Astros was not, not that they got cheating. I mean, they were smart about it. Do your thing, all right? But the problem was with MLB, the, the punishment that they actually got for doing that. Yeah, it, I definitely agree that it wasn't, it wasn't enough. Um, it really, I don't think it deterred people um, from cheating like they did. You know, they lose a manager, which, you know, A.J. Hinch is a, obviously a very good manager. He did really well turning them around. Uh, they lose uh, their, uh, their front office guy, and they lose uh, Carlos Beltran, which was involved with it, which kind of came in later, um, but they lost him as well. And there's just – it didn't prove to other teams that cheating was that big of a deal. Um, and that was my appeal to it is just – Uh, the MLB didn't do enough to snuff out those guys. I mean, and then the Yankees came up later on, showed that they were cheating the same way. There's a whole bunch of teams that have video on stuff. You know, NFL, NBA, always watch tape on stuff. You know, it's, it's, it is what it is. But in real time, in that kind of way, is that fair to anybody else? You know, did the, and did the MLB do enough? I don't think so. Um, but obviously that they did what they did, and we can only deal with the consequences from there. I mean, even the, uh, even the Boston Red Sox, for that matter. And also, the worst thing the, uh, the Houston Astros actually did was, you know, the owner who sat in the press conference and said it did not affect the game. Ridiculous. <laughs> that's, that's... I mean, it totally changed the whole game. Like, well, what do you mean? I mean, that was so dis- – it was, it was disgraceful, man. Imagine in the Premier League Championship, you have PKs, right? The game goes to PKs, and one goalkeeper knows – which direction the PKs are going and the other one doesn't, you know, like no one would, that wouldn't, you wouldn't even second guess that. That'd be ridiculous. It would be unfair. No one would do it that way. In the NFL, if a team knew what play was coming, uh, you know, on a fourth and goal in the Super Bowl, 
you know, no one would say that that was fair. And it's the same thing in the Astros. They did it in the playoffs. They did it the entire year. And it proved that they did it several years before that. There's been a lot of people that said they got video on them that has evidence on it. They did it several years before that. That's, it's crazy that we didn't do more to that and, and really deter other people from doing it. It's really a shame. It really is. Yeah, so Houston Astros, uh, Jose Altuve, he, he didn't want to take his third off after winning and that uh-huh. fiasco. Uh-huh. It, it was so obvious. <laughs> if I'm that dude, you can do whatever. You can take my you can take my shirt off, helmet, pants. Exactly. We just want we just went to the World Series. You know, I just hit a walk off home run. You can do whatever you want, man. And he said, no, 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 not my shirt. I wonder why. <laughs> wink, wink. And and also today, uh, when I don't know who they were playing against, but both Altuve and uh, Bregman, they both got hit by the pitcher. Did <laughs> it was end up it ended up being a third guy too. I can't remember. It didn't. Yeah. Really Looked like it was intentional. One of them was an off-speed pitch, so it had some spin. It could have got away from him. The other one kind of hit him in the elbow. When they start hitting Ash, when you start seeing Astros getting hit square in the middle of the back, that's when you'll know it's intentional. When they get start hitting there, or it kind of comes up towards their head a little bit to scare them a little bit. Even if it doesn't hit them, they'll scare them. That's when you'll know it's intentional. And I'm going to put over on every single game and watch the Houston's get absolutely smoked by it. See, I, I, I was I was trying to get into that topic. Um, so Vegas has over and under odds, over and under for for number of hits and it, oh, double it, it. Very, double. It's very fascinating. Yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see because against them you really can't give them that many free bases because they're so good. You can't just put guys on. All three of those guys that got hit today came around and scored. So how many teams are going to hit guys? And then if they give up three runs, you know, for every every three guys that they hit, man. It's it's not worth it at that point, but you know if teams are ahead in games or really far behind in games, you'll you'll see some Astros getting hit. That's for sure. What I would recommend to the pitchers would be target the ankle areas. <laughs> Don't go for the butt. Go for the ankle. Yeah, where there's less less meat, less meat. Mm-hmm. With NFL season coming soon, uh, overs and unders are a big talking points, or that will be a big talking point soon. And we'll put Avi to the sword uh, next, but some more sports news with Avi. The Will family that owns the Minnesota Vikings has emerged as a serious candidate to buy the Minnesota Timberwolves. See, isn't Kevin Garnett in- interested in it too? Yep. I mean, by the way, he's he's still getting paid by Boston Celtics. Kings Marvin Bagley the third will miss the remainder of the season due to a right foot sprain sustained in practice. Also, Patrick Beverly left the bubble due to a personal emergency. Bagley is so... I feel so bad for Bagley. He's always been injured the last couple of years. Such, such a talent. And finally, a lack of exercise is causing as many deaths as smoking across the world. It is estimated that a third of the adults are not doing enough physical activity, causing 5.3 million deaths per year. I mean, that can be right, man. You better start working out, Avi. I've, I've always been telling you. NFL training camp starts on July the 28th. Uh, there have been so many news about health protocols and all that. Uh, I think they finally agreed on something. So Alex is also a big NFL fan, fanatic. Hmm. So what, what, what do you think about the season coming up? Is it really going to be possible without the fans? I think it will affect the guys. Um just with the atmosphere, you know, going to a game and having fans cheering you on is a, is a huge difference uh, to me personally. Uh, you know, most of the time, maybe you're locked in, like right in the middle of the game. Uh, when you're on the field, maybe you don't notice it as much, but off the field, you know, it's, it's going to be so dry and, and, you know, and stagnant there when you're sitting on the bench, you know, what kind of energy are those guys going to have realistically compared to a normal game when you have 100,000 people screaming at you? Uh, to do to do something positive, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see. So to our listeners, so Alex is also a huge fan of the America's team, Dallas Cowboys. I'll put you on the spot this time. Let's play over and under. Thirty touchdowns over on uh, over or under for Dak Prescott. I'm gonna go ahead and hammer the over on that with the wide receiver core that he's got and Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, and then even and even Blake Jarwin, I think I think he's going to have over thirty this year. We've got a really good squad going out there on the offense, and I think they're going to spread the field pretty well. I, I'm going to give him over on the thirty. Well, I think he's salty about his contract and might probably be allowed in about three games into the season. And Andy Dalton will get about twenty five thousand. How about that? Hot take. Hot take. <laughs> 
we'll get back. Uh, we'll get Alex back uh, towards the end of the season just to um, just to bash Avi for the statement that he just made. I mean, it's good for Cowboys. That won't happen. Won't happen. Dak, Dak till I die. So more over and under. Tom Brady, 30 touchdowns. Over, under. You can't bet against Tom. You just can't. He's proven it over and over again that he's going to do something stupid with nobody's. He's got – and he's got Gronk now. What, what, what else does he need? Gronk's himself is going to have 15 probably. I could see him going going dumb over there in Tampa. And Mike Evans, Mike Evans is one of the best receivers in the league. Come on. He's got over 30 for sure. Him, Godwin. Uh, Avinas will be a little salty if we don't mention his Broncos side. Um, over or under for Drew Locke? 30 touchdowns. We'll, we'll, we'll go ahead with it. For Drew Locke, 30 touchdowns? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I'm going to go under. I mean, even though I root for him to go over, over 30, but it's just... I mean, he's still got a lot to learn in the offense, man. We got a couple of big wide receivers coming in the squad, so he'll need some time to get the chemistry going on. I hope he gets 45, but I'm, I'm just going to go 20 to 25 right now. I'm surprised always uh, realistic this time. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a Bronco fan, man. At least I'm not delusional like you guys. It's, uh, <laughs> saying it's, it's, it's our year every year, man. I, I don't think Alex mentioned uh, it's, it's our year. but You already did twice yeah, in this show. You know, you already, always, you already did. See, see, we always need that positivity in life, you know. Dude, that's not that, that's that's not positive. That, that's delusion. <laughs> see, you, you, see, you will call that delusional. Um, you know, till till we till we don't win anything, and bam, there we go. and bam, we win. There it is again. Uh, then what are you gonna say, Avi? Nothing. Right. He won't have a comeback for that. Yeah. At least I did go to the parade when Broncos won the Super Bowl. You guys been to a parade? Okay, anyways, let's move on. <laughs> Hopefully we'll have a parade soon. Uh, but this time we'll be without fans. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, just like Liverpool. <laughs> yeah, so Alex will be in Duncanville with his uh, music choir students, you know, zamming. <laughs> Absolutely. Get that tailgate going on, man. I mean, sure. Yeah. On Friday, I'm going out to Globe Life on Friday. I got a friend who's hooking us up with some uh, Texas live food. We're going to watch that game in there and uh, be ready to go for the opening day. What time is it in this heat? Uh, in the heat, it's going to be inside because Texas live, they have it like all enclosed and the new ballparks got it enclosed. So yeah, I've, I've been there. I've been sure. there. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be nice. I'm excited for it. So parades won't really happen this year. Um, and looks like neither will individual awards. Ballon d'Or was canceled this week. So to, to, to my listeners and especially uh, our special guest today, Alex. So Ballon d'Or is given, by, is given to the best player in Europe award, uh, given by French magazine. Um, it, it's very prestigious. It's been there for more than 50 years. And this year, just because of the pandemic, it's been canceled. So we'll touch up on it with our top five. Shall we, Avi? I got it. Who's our number five? Cristiano Ronaldo. League leader in scoring. I mean, they already got the title and the Champions League is still in, in his sights. So. Yeah, didn't he become the first, first striker or For, first player to no. score 50 goals in three different uh, leagues? Phenomenal. Yep. All right, number four, Karim Benzema. But you can also go, you can also go for Gareth Bale uh, either way. I mean, if, if it was given for golfers? I mean, Benzema, just because, you know, uh, he feels Cristiano Ronaldo is halfway there. He, he has been terrific all season. His hold-up play, link-up play. Number three, Lionel Messi. I mean, without him, man, the Barca would be a mid-table team in the, in the La Liga this season. No doubt. Number two, Sergio Ramos. Highest scorer for a defender this season, and they're considered the lowest in the league. See, didn't you just pick him for the for the Ballon d'Or itself a couple of days ago? Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you, but, I mean, see, you can't backtrack. But I'm gonna wait on the Champions League. But I said if Ramos wins the Champions League, yeah, he I mean, done you said yet. but, but you made a pick. Yeah, but he haven't won the Champions League yet. So if he wins, Ramos has to be the Ballon d'Or, but he has not yet. So I mean, you can't, you can't, you can't put say if and again and look at the body shape of Sergio Ramos, man. That body deserves 
to be in the top five. And finally, the number one, and of course it has to be, I mean, it's pretty obvious, but Robert Lewandowski. Yeah, that guy has been phenomenal I mean, this year. 51 goals. I mean, it, this has to be the best chance for him to win the Champions League. Yeah, not just goals. Uh, he has been the top, top scorer of every uh, cup competition or league he's been in, involved in. Yeah, and I think the, the only reason France decided to cancel the Balloon d'Or was uh, they saw the TikTok, those ridiculous videos, and they said, nah, we can't get Balloon d'Or to this guy, man. Might Too be, late. might be. And, and another reason could be France, uh, you know, they, they, they canceled their league season early, so Mbappe or Neymar wouldn't have any chances. So although we had a baseball special today, we can't really finish without our Premier League segment, which is up next. Veteran defensive head and Super Bowl champion Michael Bennett says he's retiring from the NFL. He's probably going to jump offside from his couch. <laughs> <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> By saying Lakers have worked too hard in their restart preparation, guard Alex Caruso skips fa- family's sister wedding to stay in the bubble. Dedication. It really is. And finally, the Washington Nationals announced on Monday that Dr. Anthony Fauci will throw out the first pitch on Thursday when they open up their season against the New York Yankee. Look at the excitement on uh, Alex's face. He's I mean, been advocating for all of sports to shut down, and then he's going to go throw out the first pitch for the Nationals. Interesting. I guarantee you the ball will be well sanitized before he throws out the pitch. See, at least he's trying to wear a mask, unlike some of our leaders. I mean, he has to, right? He has to. If he doesn't, I'm going to eat him alive. Even if it's just me, dang it. (laughs) One thing you can't mask is the value of staying in the Premier League. More than 100 million of revenue each year. Aston Villa won against Arsenal today in a really important class. Second last game of the season, they produced the goods whenever needed against a flat Arsenal side, and now they're well ahead of Watford when it comes to goal difference. How fitting is this for Arsenal to win back-to-back games against Liverpool and then Man City, only to lose against Aston Villa 1-0? Typical Arsenal, man. I feel like they do it uh, purposely on fans, you know? Don't get me wrong, the game has improved. I mean, the players are giving their more effort towards the team. Arteta took the team when they were eighth in the league position, and now they're, in, now they're sitting at 10th, so... I mean, defensively, they were solid today too. Uh, just a little blunder uh, from a corner kick. Other than that, they were defensively sound. They cr- when, when you play back three and back five, uh, the creativity in the midfield goes off and um, uh, people will criticize, I mean, Ozil every now and then. He's old now. Uh, obviously, uh, like I said, he should leave. But there's a void left by him in the team. Uh, and, it, it, and it's clear to see uh, there's no creativity uh, between the midfield and this forward line. Yeah, and also, you don't know what you're getting from Man City, man. It's a, it's a head or tail. Head, 4-0, tail, lose 2-1. Uh, it's, it's like they don't even care. I mean, they, they just want the Champions League to return. Yeah, I, th- I, feel, like I feel like they'll be cl- uh, heavy favorites for the Champions League. Um, talking about Champions League, Chelsea will have a big game tomorrow against Liverpool. Um, if they manage to win this, they will definitely qualify for the Champions League next season. And also the relegation battle, man. The last game, uh, West Ham versus Aston Villa. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a thrilling encounter. And Watford are playing Arsenal next. Um, the, uh, that should be a win for Watford. You sure? Because, I mean, Arsenal got no motive to play for that game. They're not going to make it into Europa. That, that's true, but uh, their history with Watford recently, with, uh, especially with Troy Drini. <laughs> oh, yeah, that. Okay. Yeah, some cojones from the Arsenal side. Much needed. With that, we're almost nearing the end of the show. Uh, Please follow us and subscribe to us on our various podcasting sites such as Google, Apple, as well as Spotify. Please follow us on our Instagram at uh, Legion Up Sports where we have plenty of memes, stories, news, polls as well. If you have any suggestions, comments, feedbacks, do let us know as well. So before we go, I would like to thank Alex for coming into the show. Do you got anything for us, for our listeners, before we head out? 
No, check out the uh, check out the MLB. It's going to be the first thing on for the U.S. sports this year. Um, if you're new to baseball, check it out for the first few games. Give it a chance and uh, see if you can learn something new. Uh, check out our Rangers. They're going to be a lot of fun this year if our pitching staff is good. Um, otherwise, you'll see a lot of young players getting a chance to play in a season that they normally wouldn't. It's going to be a lot of fun. And also, if you got T-Mobile, go to the website and get that free MLB season. So, I mean, I got it in my phone. I never watch it, but still, it's a good thing to have. Yeah, it's like 80 bucks that you're saving. Like, yep. Yeah, that's a big time. That's big time. That's all. Thank you for listening. We'll see you again next time. Goodbye. Peace. <laughs>